Good morning, I am Marie, and I wanna welcome you to our online Sunday celebration service. We are so glad you're with us. Before we begin, if this is your first time, we like to take communion each Sunday together. So if you'd like to join in, go ahead and grab some bread and juice right now. And somewhere in the middle of our worship service, we'll take a moment to stop and have it together. And after the worship experience is over, I'll come back and talk about ways of giving and also ways that you can get involved in what we're doing this week. Okay, let's get started and I'll see you on the other side. I wish 
you so much that you hear each voice, even these little bitty babies, Lord, and it's so good to your ears, and we thank you that you give us the gift of song. Thank you for our
Welcome back, Marie here. I hope you enjoyed that awesome worship. I know I did. And if you're new here or if you have questions, we'd love to connect with you. Please check us out on our website at sensicompass.com, C-I-N-C-Y-C-O-M-P-A-S-S.com and click on I am here. We'd love to connect with you and love to reach out. Um, I've got a few announcements and then I'll tell you about four ways of giving. Our first announcement is we have a women's virtual gathering coming up on Tuesday, June the 9th from 6.30 until 8 p.m. If you'd like more information or would like to register, please go on our website under the Women's Gathering page. Our second announcement is we have a Mission Cincinnati Hope Over, Over Hunger. Um, it's an outreach that we're doing this summer and we're working to serve over 3,500 families with meals. So if you'd like to come out to help us to pack it up or to give it out, um, you can go on the website to sign up. That'll be fr Friday, June the 12th will be the um, pack up time and Saturday, June 13th, we'll be giving the food out. So please go on and register. We'd love to have your help. Um, number three, we have children's dedication coming up the week of June 14th. So if you'd like more information about dedicating your child, please go on the website and check us out there. And last but not least, please stay connected with us on our website. We've got a lot of great things going on this summer and lots of ways to stay together with all the physical distancing going on right now. Also too, we have four main ways of giving. Number one is on our website at the sensicompass.com um, website. So um, there's buttons on there for giving. Also too, if you wanna come and do it in person, we have at, our, at the church there at door number one, there's a black box and you can just put your offering in that box. Uh, number three, you can mail your offering in if you like, the snail mail, which is the address is 161 Northland Boulevard, Cincinnati 45246, 45246, 161 Northland Boulevard. And last but not least, we have the bank. You can actually pay bills to your bank and there's no charge to you or to, you, to us. So that's also the fourth way to, of giving. So before we um, move forward, I'm going to say a quick word of prayer, and then it'll be time for our message. Thank you, Lord, so much for the opportunity to give. We thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. And we just thank you that you allow us to be able to sow back into your kingdom and to give, to help, and to bless others and to um, just to take forth the gospel. So thank you very much for all of those who are going to give and multiply it back to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Well, hey, we are jumping into our summer series, and uh, this is exciting because uh, that means the entire summer we're going to be focused on one series where we're going to learn a lot about uh, just what God would want us to learn from this series. The series is called Be Brave, and so for this entire summer, we're going to lean into this idea of bravery and learn what God would have us to learn about being brave as a child of God. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, jump into some misconceptions about bravery, some sort of lies or things that people think you have to do in order to be brave or have to be in order to be brave. And so the first misconception is that being brave for Jesus is closely connected to being spiritually mature. In other words, I have to be spiritually, a spiritually mature Christian in order to do a brave thing or a courageous kind of thing. All right. And again, that's that's not true. That that's a lie. OK, uh, God will use a babe in Christ if he has to use that person in order to do some really big things for him. OK, here's another one. Uh, being brave for Jesus means I have to do something really hard and something really tough. Again, another misconception, another lie, another thing that is not true, okay? Meaning that I have to do something really hard and something really tough. Like who defines hard, who defines tough, okay? From Jesus's perspective, Jesus will give us what he has called us to do, okay? And, uh, and, and sometimes that thing could be easy and sometimes it will be tough, okay? But again, we have to watch out for just defining that, man, walking with Christ and doing Jesus stuff is just hard and tough, okay? Not true. Here's another one. Being brave for Jesus means I have to sacrifice my life. 
All right. Even though we read of different people throughout the Bible who did sacrifice their lives, they, they gave their lives up for the kingdom of God, okay, or in serving God, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to do the same thing or that we're going to lose our lives uh, in serving God or in doing brave things for God, okay? Here's another misconception that being brave for Jesus means I have to win. And again, we would sort of challenge that and say, well, who are we winning for? Are we winning from a God's perspective or are we trying to win from a world perspective? Again, another thing that's not true. Being brave for Jesus means that I must win, okay? Here's another one. Being brave for Jesus means I have to be strong. In other words, I have to be a warrior. And I love, man, those warrior kind of movies. But, you know, here's the deal. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that I have to be the strong, tough guy in order to be brave. God will use whomever he wants to use, whether they're the tough guy in the room or they're as skinny as a toothpick, okay? Here's the deal. Bravery from God's perspective is totally different from bravery from the world's perspective. Two different perspectives. They look through two different kinds of lenses, you know? Uh, there's a story in the Bible where uh, Jesus... Uh, after feeding uh, 5,000 people, and even prior to that, John the Baptist uh, actually lost his life. His, uh, he was beheaded. Uh, in Matthew chapter 14, it, there's a story told where uh, after Jesus had fed the 5,000, he sends his disciples to uh, let the people go after feeding them and to cross the lake. They were on the boat, and uh, those who uh, have been churchgoers for a long time, this is, of course, where there's a storm that arises, and, uh, and the disciples are chilling out, sleeping, or doing whatever the storm arises, and they start to freak out pretty much, Okay. And so here's what the scriptures say, Matthew chapter 14, verses 25 through 27. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. He's walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. And then verse 27 says this, but Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. He says, take courage. In other words, be brave, okay? So here's the deal. We are encouraged to be brave, just as Jesus encouraged the disciples to be brave. And boy, if there was ever a season that we needed to really work on our courage or work on being brave, it is in this season. In this season, where Jesus is probably going to be calling his church, don't forget the church is not the building, even though we're here in this building, has nothing to do with this building. The church of Jesus Christ has really been challenged during this season, right? To actually be the church of Jesus Christ, to leave the four-wall building and actually put into action being the church of Jesus Christ in the spaces that they live in. And so Jesus challenges us to be brave in the spaces that we live in. Jesus expects all of those who follow him to be brave despite whatever the cost. And again, keep in mind, that cost could be very large. That cost could be, you know, very small. Uh, he defines the cost. So we are encouraged. We are called to be the church of Jesus Christ, especially in a season like this. And man, I, I, I am sure you all are experiencing opportunities and times where you're actually able to do that where you're actually able to be the church of Jesus Christ to the people that are right around you. Paul is writing to the church in Philippi, in Philippi, Philippians chapter 1. Um, we have to keep in mind Paul is actually in prison, so he's like not right there with them. So he's in prison and he's actually writing this letter to them. And he's also actually talking about life and death, all right? And he's talking about life and many times Paul was in situations where he actually should have died. And we're actually going to use one of those scriptures in just a moment here, and I'll tell you about it. And, um, but in Philippians chapter 1, verses 20, Paul says, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have su sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Paul is saying, man, I, I just hope that I'll have sufficient courage that, so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body. I hope that I will, all right? And so this is a major deal, just in this area of uh, uh, courage 
just in this area of bravery. And man, during this summer, my hope is that we're going to be encouraged to be brave and to, the lean, and to lean into this idea of allowing God to, to give us like tasks and responsibilities that will call for us to be brave in the spaces that we're in. Okay, so today's message is going to be titled, Called to be Brave. We are called to be brave. We're called to be brave by Jesus Christ. This is a compelling message given by Jesus. There's a compelling message given uh, by Jesus to Peter at the end of John, where he uh, tells Peter to feed my sheep. He tells him that three times, Peter, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. Uh, Peter has a calling. He has a task. He has a responsibility, a job given to him by Jesus. Feed my sheep. We are all called by God to have a responsibility, a task, a job to do. And that task or that job varies in so many different ways, so many different aspects. So our calling is a major deal when we look at us and our relationship with Jesus Christ. Our calling is also because of our membership. I mean, that's the only reason we would even be talking about a calling. It's because of our membership uh, in the body of Christ. We are only called because of our membership in the kingdom of God. God calls courageous Jesus followers to do brave and courageous things. To stand when standing is not popular. To make a difference. To speak up. To sit in. To save a life. To give. To share And sometimes just to simply be. We are called by God. We're called by God because of our relationship with God. You have no relationship with God, you probably won't be called by God. In other words, there's no reason for him to use you. God uses his children. Here's the deal. Knowing that my membership gives me bravery is important because of the task at hand. And sometimes the task at hand can be very hard. As children of God, man, we can find ourselves be, be uh, at, at times be called to do some really tough and some really hard things. And those things vary in so many different ways. I wish we could say like, you know, one shoe fits all, but they don't. God calls us all to do different kinds of things in our lives. And so because of my membership in the body of Christ, I need to be encouraged need to be encouraged by words such as this, I am a child of the king, or I can do anything with Christ on my side, or I'm a warrior, or I can do all things through Christ who, who gives me strength, or, you know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I will fear no evil because God is with me. Or the sun will not harm me by day, nor the moon by night. Or the Lord is my strength and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Or fear not, I am with you. I mean, these are scriptures that let us know that it is our membership that defines our calling. In other words, these scriptures help to give us strength. They help to give us uh, an encouragement towards our true north. An understanding that our strength comes from God. Our strength comes by God. And because of that strength, we have the ability to be able to lean into to the kinds of things that God will call us to do. We should also welcome the opportunity to be brave. And I know that sounds as crazy as ever. But this means we should welcome the opportunity to receive direction from God. It would be reckless for us just to sit on the sideline on a couch, very comfortable couch, and just say, well, I'll just chill out here and just wait till Jesus comes. I mean, that would be pretty reckless. That would be pretty lazy too, you know. Um, God expects us to be, be like hard workers. He wants us to be individuals who are excited and who are passionate about going out there and following him and doing his work, doing his service. In fact, if, we, if we're not out there doing God's work, then what kind of good is going to be done in a broken and a dysfunctional and evil world. We should welcome the opportunity to be brave, the opportunity to receive direction from God. We want to hear from God. 
Keep in mind that God directs all of us in different ways. One shoe does not fit us all. God will give, give a task to one of us and give a totally different task and responsibility to someone else. But he expects us to be brave and courageous and to push through and to get it done. We should also welcome the opportunity to hear from God. You know, this sounds good, but it can be very, very hard. Okay, here's some reasons why this can be very hard. Number one, because of fear. Sometimes it's just very fearful. It's very frightening. Some would like the disciples watching Jesus walk on water. It's very fearful sometimes, uh, taking on a calling or a task or responsibility from God when God asks us to do something. So it's very fearful. Here's another one. Sometimes we're just tired. We're just straight up tired. It's not that we're afraid. It's not that we're lazy. It's not that we don't want to do it. It's just that we're just tired. Here's another one. We're just lazy. We're just straight up lazy. Like, I mean, no energy, no, no life in us. We're just, we're just lazy. We don't want to do it. Don't care about doing it. Don't, you know, don't ask me to do it. We're just straight up lazy. Here's another one. We're just weak. We're weak. We're, we're just weak, you know. Here's another one. We're angry. We're angry, you know. Reminds me of Jonah. We're just angry. And no, God, I know you're wanting me to go to these people. I know you wanted me to go tell these people about you, but I don't want to go, you know. And so, you know, God, I'm angry and I'm not about to be brave for you. And then lastly, we're just clueless. We just don't even know. We're not even aware. We might not have the spiritual maturity or the insight or the discernment to hear from God what God may be trying to get through to us about. So those are some reasons why we may find ourselves just not being brave and taking on the calling and the thing that God may be wanting us to do. Welcome the opportunity to take on things that are hard or to take on things that are tough, to take, take on things that calls for you to be brave. And sometimes those opportunities may be opportunities where God is calling you to speak up when speaking up isn't popular talking to a leader, your leadership team in times when it may cost you your job. Or what about listening when you actually want to speak? You know, like, you know, for those people who just really like to talk, like, no, they don't like to talk. Those people who just love to talk, like they love to hear themselves just talk. I don't know if they actually listen to themselves talk. It sounds like they do, don't, don't they? But they just love to talk. Um, but what if God is saying, hey, you know something, I want you to be brave. I want you to be brave and just be quiet for the season or during this moment, you know? And I have, t guys, I got to tell you, I have times like that. And it's usually not because it's times where I just want to talk and just run on. There's usually times when uh, there's a, just a tough thing going on in, you know, my arena or, you know, uh, sometimes it could be just a, just a tough thing happening in society. And I'll just receive from the Holy Spirit during this is a season where I just want you to be quiet. You know, I don't want you to talk. And dur during that season, I'll usually have individuals who will come and they'll stoke me. They'll come and ask me questions about whatever the situation is. And again, I just have to remind myself this is a season of quietness. Doreen, this is not a season for you to express your opinions, express your thoughts on stuff, to give your critique. Dorian, just be quiet. Just listen. What about God giving you the opportunity or the calling to save a life? Like actually to, get, to save a life, to give wise counsel to someone that needs wise counsel or to mentor someone that needs to be mentored, you know? Or what about God giving you the challenge of challenging the process? And again, this is another one where you're speaking when speaking isn't popular or you're challenging the process. In other words, something has been done for so long well, God may be rubbing you in a way or calling you in a way to actually ask questions or to give ideas that may, you know, uh, take a, a, a process or take the rhythm of something in a totally different direction than the way it has been done for years upon years upon years, you know? Well, what about God calling you to go to unpopular places, you know, or, you know, to popular places that... That, that's not popular, you know, like, like you going to 
places that children of God wouldn't necessarily go to or do things that are unpopular from the body of Christ's perspective. I mean, like, you know, any, all of these things will mark you. You know, by doing that brave kind of thing, all of these things will label you. Like, there is, there's a cost to, to you doing these kinds of things, these tough kinds of things. And even as I gave you a few of those examples there, immediately I'm thinking of times where God has called me to do some really tough things in my life and how those things really cost me, you know. But God still kept me through it all. Because again, don't forget, I'm connected to God. I'm connected to the community of believers. He's the one that gave me the marching orders. So if he gave me the marching orders, it must mean that he's going to protect me and keep me in his perfect peace. Paul, in the book of Acts, after his conversion, Paul meets with the disciples and he travels with Barnabas. He's stoned in Lystra. He meets with Timothy. He's in prison. Like Paul, uh, after he is... Um, Go after he goes through his conversion experience, like there's a few scriptures there where it talks about like Paul is like crazy on fire. I mean, on fire for Jesus, you know? And then uh, the disciples pull him aside and, you know, they give him some good coaching and direction and, and really minister to him and, and, and inform him and teach him about who Jesus was. And, and it really helped to build his ministry up. But anyway, at the, the, the last few chapters of Acts, I mean, Paul is on fire. He's going all over the place, just ministering and, and helping to build up the church of Jesus Christ. So Paul finally goes to Jerusalem. And while in Jerusalem, Paul is arrested. While arrested, he tells his conversion story. And, um, and, and during this, this time of him being arrested, Paul uh, goes through a very tough and a very hard experience and time. I mean, a time that almost actually leads to his death. Uh, and, and so in Acts 23, verse 11, here's what it says. After Paul had gone through this very tough moment here, all right, of defending himself and, and, and standing up for Christ, it says in Acts 23, verse 11, it says, the following night, the Lord stood near Paul and said, take courage. As you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. He says, take courage. Be brave. You know, that whole take courage. And in fact, this whole scripture here, um, what's sad about the scripture is that you would hope that God is coming and saying, Paul, you have done great. Sort of like what he tells, uh, sort of like what Paul says at the end of Timothy that we're going to use in just a few moments here. Uh, but he doesn't. Paul doesn't feel like his time is up. I mean, the Lord is telling Paul, take courage. In other words, be strong because you think this is bad. You know, you're getting ready to really go through some tough stuff. OK, so he tells him to take courage. I remember um, when I accepted my calling into ministry prior to me accepting my calling into ministry, I got to be real with you. The last thing that I ever wanted to do was actually being ministry. I did not want to be a pastor, didn't want to have anything to do with the church. The, the most that I wanted to do is just at least know Jesus, okay? But the last thing I wanted to do was to be a preacher, a minister, a pastor. I would, okay, okay, I'll be an usher at the door. That's, the, that's, that's all I would do. I just wanted to be an usher at the door. But the last thing I wanted to do was be a pastor. My granddad was a pastor. My dad is a pastor. My uncles are pastors. My brother is a pastor. My brother-in-law, every daggone person in my family are pastors. I did not want to be a pastor. I didn't want to be a pastor because I saw their lifestyle. It was not a lifestyle of the rich and famous. It was the lifestyle of, you know, hey, here's what God has given you and make the best of it. His focus, the most important thing was his kingdom, saving lives, helping those who are suffering, helping those who are struggling. Not a glamorous life uh, for a young kid to look at and say, yeah, I want to be like that. No way. I also saw their suffering. I mean, I, would, I remember my granddad going to church on Sunday nights and 
and not only going to church on Sunday nights, but going to church when, like, I mean, it wasn't the popular thing to do. It was just a few people going, and it was just boring. Um, it was late. I was tired. I mean, they didn't even have kid ministry. You know, it was just, it just sucked. It was horrible. Um, but that's, I mean, that was minute, you know, I mean, compared to the other kinds of suffering that I saw them just having to go through, you know. But here's the deal. I also saw their faith in God. They believed in God. I mean, they believed that God will, would provide for them and that God would help them through whatever it is that they would find themselves through. And man, I can remember my mom and dad just uh, going through some really tough times in life and just watching how God provided every step of the way, every step of the way, every step of the way, you know? I saw their ability to push through tough situations. Like, they didn't give up. They didn't give in. They just always believed that God had their back. They always believed it. And I mean, in times where someone like the world would say, look, you ought to just give up on that God. Like, he's not faithful. He doesn't push through. And in times where, you know, maybe God was putting them in a place of growing or maturing through a tough situation. In other words, that tough situation, making them stronger, or making them more mature, making them wiser. Times when the world would say, you ought to give up on that God. My parents hung in there. They would never give up. They would never give in. They had great stickability. I saw their courage. I saw their courage. I hear those same, those same words that, um, that uh, the Lord shared with Paul on that night in prison. Dorian, take courage. As you have watched your forefathers testify about me, so you must do also. Yeah, do the same thing, Dorian. And I accepted that opportunity uh, years ago, man, to start preaching and start living the pastor's life. And I got to be real with you. It is the best life ever. And no, I am not rich and famous. And no, I do not have the things of the rich and famous. But man, I have peace. I have joy in spite of the storms, the trials, the tough times, and the list goes on and on. God's on my side. He backs me up. And because of that, I have great faith. I have great courage. I have great bravery. And being able to lean into the kind of things that God would have me to lean into. Here's the deal. God defines our success. Boy, that would be real tough if the world defined our success, wouldn't it? Our success in being brave is not defined by us or the world. It's defined by God. He defines it. There, there's nothing better than taking on a job and making it to the end of the job and being able to be celebrated by the boss man or the boss lady and them saying, you have done well. You received the job. You didn't, you didn't like bicker and cry and talk about it and complain about it. You received it. You walked it out well. You, you received every single task that I gave you, and you followed through. You persevered. You didn't give up. You didn't cheat the process, but you persevered all the way, and you made it to the end. I mean, to be able to have a, a boss, a, you know, the big guy, who gives you the responsibility, the calling, the task, and to have them say to you, you have done such an amazing job. Way to go. Good job. Well done. It's just beautiful. You've received a job. You've walked it out. You've persevered. And you made it to the end. That's, that's true bravery. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul writes to Timothy and gives him just some amazing coaching and just wisdom nuggets for him as he, you know, is going to be doing ministry. And then Paul says at the end of 2 Timothy, he says 
In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, he says, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. And then he says, I have fought a good fight. Sort of like those four points I just made, right? I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And then he says this. This is the celebration part. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. All of us who have longed for his appearance. All of us who have longed for his appearing. Every single one of us who have held the faith, who have believed, who are just waiting and waiting and waiting and holding and holding and holding. Every single one of us, we're going to receive that crown of righteousness because of our faithfulness, our faithfulness and our bravery and our courageousness, our courage in, in, in following through what God has called us to do. There's a book by Erwin McMinnis that I want to close uh, with. There's a quote here in this, uh, from his book, Uprising. And uh, I think it's a, it's a very fitting quote to close on. Here's what he says. Our final destination is a life defined for courage. From beginning to end, we will be called to make courageous decisions even while we find ourselves gripped with fear. There are no exemptions. Any claims that you should be exempt from having to walk this path are rejected. Any attempt to create an elitist category for those who live heroic lives while placing yourselves outside of it is unacceptable. If your argument is that you just aren't cut for this kind of adventure, you can rest in the comfort that you are absolutely right, which is exactly why Jesus is calling you out. You are called to be brave, whether you like it or not, whether you like the job and the task that God has given you. He's not going to move. He's not going to leave and, and, and say, okay, I'll come back in the next week. I'll come back when you're ready. It doesn't work like that. God will stay right there until you pick that calling up and do what he asks you to do. Be brave. And in the next couple of weeks, man, this summer is going to be exciting. We're going to talk about some you know, of the great benefits that come out of us being brave, that come out of us doing courageous kinds of things. Like there are great blessings that come out of it. It's not like God just says, hey, I'm going to call you to do, be brave, and the only one that's going to benefit is my kingdom. No, guess what? We're a part of his kingdom, so we benefit also. In other words, blessings also fall our way, come our way. And so there are some amazing blessings and benefits that we get in the kingdom of God when we do courageous and brave things in, our, in the spaces that God has us living in. Amen? All right. Well, hey, we're going to close now with prayer. And I am hoping and praying that as this message has gone forth to you, that there are some things that the Holy Spirit is calling out in your life. Like there are some things that the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, ding, 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 ding. Don't forget, you remember I asked you to do this thing, you know, or ding, 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 ding. Hey, you remember I had asked you to do that thing there or ding, 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 ding. Don't, hey, you remember, you know, last week I brought this to your attention, you know. Like I think that the Holy Spirit will bring some things to your attention because of this message that you will be challenged with, but you'll be excited about learning how to take it on and uh, figure out how to be brave and walk it out. Hey, let's pray. So Heavenly Father, we ask that you just come and that you just fall afresh. Like, in other words, Lord, just allow your spirit to just bless this message. And to bless, we, we ask for your anointing, not just on this message, but on this entire series we believe that your Holy Spirit gave this to us, God, gave this to us for this season, especially with everything that's going on in this season. We believe that you are calling us 
individuals who are here at Compass and individuals who watch us online or individuals who will watch these messages because someone from Compass maybe invited them to check us out, we believe that your Holy Spirit is leading us to do a series and to hear messages around this topic of bravery. I don't know, Lord, if there are things that you are calling us individually, individually to that we are needing to be brave in or even us as a church. But Lord, we believe that if we don't have clarity on that now, that you will give us clarity. And you will give us direction. Or whenever it shows up, we'll be prepared for it. So Lord, we ask that you bless and allow your anointing to fall afresh on this series and on this message. Let this message be such a loud call to us in our own individual lives. Lord, make it clear. Oh, please, God, make it so plain that we are able to understand with great clarity what you are leading, what you're wanting us to do, what you're directing us to do. God, show us. We're your children. Sometimes we're naive. Sometimes we just don't get it. But God, don't give up on us. Help us to get it. Help us to figure it out. We want to do what you're calling us to do. We want to be right where you're calling us to be. So come, Lord. Have your way. Do your thing. Grow us up. Mature us. Help us be where you want us to be so that we can live a life for you. In your name we pray. Amen. Wow, that was such a great message on being brave. And thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our service. If you'd like someone to pray with you or for you, then please visit our website and click on our prayer request image at the bottom of the page and someone will get back with you. And if you'd like to join us on our outreach for Hope Over Hunger, then please go to the website as well and sign up there. Thank you so much. Have a great week and check out this important message from Dorian. Hey, Dorian here again. Hey, I wanted to um, address something that's happening around our country. I'm sure many of you have seen uh, many of the videos um, of uh, riots and protests that's happening around our country. And even, of course, right here in our own city uh, pertaining to the death of George Floyd, uh, who was killed by a Minneapolis uh, police officer. So um, let me uh, just share some thoughts and, um, you know, just give you some action steps as to just what we're going to be doing here as a church. Uh, first of all, George's death is a sad occasion and even a worse incident because of the way that his death took place. But not only George's death, uh, but the death of so many African-Americans who have died in an unjust way. You know, I can't say that I understand everything that is playing out in the minds of the people uh, of our country right now. But here are some things that I do know as it pertains to what's going on around the country. First of all, that there is nothing worse than to have to see um, a person actually die in real time in the most reckless, irresponsible, unnecessary and horrific way whether they have been misunderstood or even if they've done something wrong. I also know that when things like this happen, it does leave people in a state of confusion, leaves people in a state of feeling hurt, leaves people in a state of grieving. It leaves people in a state of being very frustrated and also it does leave people in a state of being very angry. We have rules and laws and systems and processes that have been worked on for so many years by so many people who've sacrificed their lives um, for so long from past actions and uh, lives that have been lost in the past um, of individuals who have been treated wrong. Here's another thing that I know and that is that destroying fixtures and buildings in our community is not the answer for whatever we feel. Our forefathers um, have worked so hard to get us to where we are today and have sacrificed so much and have invested so much to build the nation that we have, to build the city that we have. We have institutions that have uh, had so much sweat and blood uh, to be built for us, to, um, to exist in, to, to learn in, to grow in, 
and 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 these institutions are being destroyed. Individuals who have uh, established businesses uh, are are being these businesses are being destroyed um, because of just again reckless actions by by individuals, and again uh, justifying it by feelings again is is reckless and irresponsible. I also know that my sons, who are 14 and 16 years old, are beginning to realize um, that when it comes to the way they are viewed and treated in our society, that um, they will potentially be viewed and treated in a different way from the white kids that they grew up with in their childhood, who they played in the sand with and, you know, played on the swings with, that as they grow up, they may potentially experience some tough times and things because of the color of their skin. That's it. Not intelligence, not what's in the money that's in their pocket, their jobs, um, what they have, all because of the color of their skin. I also know that the Church of Jesus Christ must be a church of Jesus in action. Jesus responded to the woman who was about to be killed because she had committed adultery. This story is found in the Bible. She was a human being. A group of men were getting ready to stone her, murder her, because of what they defined as her sinning, doing a wrong thing. They were about to take her life. Because of Jesus being on the scene, Jesus saved her. She, In other words, she continued to live because Jesus decided to love. The Church of Jesus Christ must not miss opportunities to show to the world what the love of Jesus looks like or should look like. A love that does not discriminate because of a person's color or culture, economic status, or even the mistakes that they made, they've made. The Church of Jesus Christ must do things that impact the lives of others and change the lives of others for the better. It must be present and it must be alive. In other words, it must be a place of action. It, it just can't lay dormant, sit on the sideline and just watch it all go down. It must be a place of action. In other words, do something. And I'm not going to define what that do something is. I mean, Jesus wouldn't define it. But I do believe that the Holy Spirit will move in the life of every church and every church person to figure out what that do something is. The Church of Jesus Christ is a place of action. We do something, whether it's coming alongside a young person that uh, has a lack of opportunities, or even an older person that is just in a tough place um, and just lending an encouraging word or uh, providing resources to help them with educational opportunities or whatever it is. It's, it's just moving out of our places of comfort and, and doing something. Jesus said that the poor will always be with us. They're not going anywhere. And so it's about time that the church begins to move and make a difference in the lives of individuals who may not be in a good place, who may be lacking or struggling. And the list goes on and on in regards to what that may look like. I can't define it, but I know that Jesus will, and he can. Here's the other thing, and that is that the Church of Jesus Christ must always send a message of love like Jesus. Must always send a message of love like Jesus. Jesus came, and the consistent message across the Gospels is a message of love. And I believe that the Church must put love into action. Also, the Church of Jesus Christ is a place of unity, uh, community, equality, and a place for all people, no matter who they are, no matter what they're struggling with or come through our doors with. All people should be able to find a seat in the room and be loved. So with that said, Compass Church is deciding next Sunday we're going to cancel our church service. So we're going to cancel our church service and, um, and we're going to partner with uh, Red Door Church and hopefully some other churches in the community. And we're going to walk the streets of our community. Uh, we're going to be the Church of Jesus Christ. So Red Door is three miles from Compass Church. We're going to meet up at Compass Church at 1030 next Sunday. Write it down on your calendar. 1030 next Sunday, we're going to meet at Compass Church in the parking lot. And we're going to wear our mask and we're going to do good social distancing. And we're going to walk uh, the streets and pray 
for our communities and our surrounding communities. We're going to jump on Camper Road, walk up to uh, uh, Winton Road and take a right and head on over to Red Door and, um, and pray for the community. So Red Door is three miles from Compass and three miles back to Compass. So you'll be able to get six miles in, okay? Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. We'll be walking in unity and community and expressing the message of love like Jesus. We'll also be praying over the surrounding communities and asking God's wisdom, God's peace, and God's protection over the people of the surrounding communities. Also, though, over our leaders. And we're asking God's, uh, that God will provide just mad wisdom for our leaders, uh, especially in a time like this. We also want to pray for our police officers and our fire, uh, our firemen and our fire women who are working over and above to keep our communities safe. We cannot lose faith in our law officers. We can't lose faith in the leaders of our communities. These individuals work so hard to make sure that we have the resources that we need in our communities and in our homes, to make sure that we are able to live in safe homes and our communities are safe and secure. We cannot lose faith in our leaders and in our officers. So here's the deal. We're going to be sending more information out to you this week. And, um, and if things change up, we'll let you know. But, um, but we're, going to, we're going to be the Church of Jesus Christ. And we're going to do this thing. The last thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be providing finances to organizations that are making a difference in the lives of young people or just uh, individuals that are marginalized. We want to see how we can come alongside individuals and, um, and really who are running programs, who have programs in place, who are already doing the work, and just see how we can uh, financially just assist them in, um, in what they're doing. And so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be inviting you all to give financially towards that. And we'll uh, provide you with some ways and some next steps as to how you can make that happen. Okay. Already we are Red Door and Compass Church already partnering in uh, providing uh, 800 bags of groceries to families every month. So that's 400 bags of groceries every uh, second and fourth Saturday of every month. Uh, we are already done with the month of May. We're jumping into June, July, and August. And, uh, and again, 800 bags every month. We're going to be investing in the lives of families. And we're really excited about that initiative that we already have going on. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to, again, make a, a financial commitment to organizations that are, again, already investing in the lives of young people and those who are marginalized and uh, helping, helping them out with, uh, with um, uh, career uh, um, areas and helping them out with, um, you know, character-based programs and um, just helping them figure out how to push through life better and making them better individuals. So that's, that's our goal. That's our plan. And that's how we're going to work this thing out. Okay, here's some next steps. Um, we want to pray for our nation. We want to pray for our nation and everything that's happening around our nation. Secondly, we want to pray for uh, the city of Minneapolis and, and Minnesota. We want to pray for them. Those guys there are very close to uh, the situation. And uh, there are a lot of emotions that are, that are happening um, in, that, in that state. And we want to pray for those guys. We also want to pray for the families involved. Um, man, I, I can't even imagine the kind of emotions that are happening you know, in, in the life of the family members, you know, of George. And um, it's just, this is horrible. And this is sad, you know. Uh, when things like this happen, I immediately imagine, man, what if that was me? And what would my family be feeling, you know, right now? And so we want to pray for George's family. And also we want to pray for the family of all of the officers involved and all of the officers in Minneapolis. Uh, I am sure they're going through a tough time. We also want to pray for the individuals in our city. We want to pray for our city, man. Um, you know, I watched the videos last night and it was tough just watching uh, just what's happening in our downtown city. Um, just the, the, the tearing up of our city of stores and looting and it's just horrible and it's just sad. So we want to pray for our city. We want to pray for our leadership. We want to pray for our police officers, our fire officers, firemen and firewomen who are working so hard and sacrificing their lives, putting their lives on the line, especially during the COVID-19 epidemic. Uh, this is just a tough season. And so if there was anything that we could do as a church, we could pray. 
And so please join me in these efforts and these initiatives that we're doing. Please show up next Sunday. I mean, whether it's you or me or whether it's just myself walking, I'm going to be walking. And, um, and, and we're, I'm going to stand. And I'm going to be the church of Jesus Christ. I'm going to be a person who puts action in my, in my steps. And, um, and I'm going to show people that the church is not a, an entity that sits silently uh, by. But, um, but we have action in us. And we're going to do something, you know. And so, uh, okay, I'm going to stop. I'm running on now. Hey, I'll see you next Sunday. Um, and I look forward to God just doing some amazing things through this. Okay? All right. Take care. God bless.